Okay guys, this is going to be another quick one. This is another buy request video. That's a follow up to one I did a week or so ago, so that video is still out there. Uh, if you want to get all the details, certainly you can uh, watch that one and then come to this one. I'll probably put a link there for your convenience. But in short, um, in this scene you've got two things. You've got a character who has the ability to jump. That was covered in the other one. Uh, in short, there's a script attached to them which looks for a key press and then applies a velocity to them. Okay. Uh, the whole idea was they should only be able to jump once, they shouldn't like hover around and they shouldn't be able to like double or triple jump. So basically what this does, the script, is it looks to see uh, if your character is still moving vertically before it lets you jump again. Um, and there is a, a collider box. It is not a trigger so it's solid. And this is the platform they're standing upon. It also has a collider box, box collider. It is also not a trigger. That way when they land on it, it stops them. They don't pass through it. So the request was that when the character lands, they want a dust cloud to instantiate at the feet. Uh, the problem was that uh, since you're using, uh, uh, you're not using triggers, most of the code that I've demonstrated up at this point is on trigger enter. In other words, it's not a collision like kicking a soccer ball or two cars crashing. It's more of an overlap, like someone walking on top of a, uh, a trap door. You're not really colliding with the trap door per se, you're really passing over it. Or someone walking through fog. Again, there is contact, but you want them to be able to pass through it, uh, not so much as being stopped by it. So in this case, they're being stopped, it's like, okay, if they're being stopped, then how do you instantiate? Well, in addition to on trigger enter, there's um, on collision. So you don't just, you, you can check for other than triggers, you can check for collision. So we'll get to the code in a second. I just want to give a little bit more overview. So what's going to happen is I created a particle system. You can see down here, I'm not going to go into the details. That's really a, a lesson in of itself it's just about okay how do I get from there to here how do I get this particle system and how do I get it to instantiate so first as you'll see uh, in the script what I've done is I've added a few things I've added a few variables as you can see they're here now and I'm going to capture the X Y and Z locations probably technically don't need Z for a, a 2d game but uh, it, it, it doesn't hurt to know how to use that and the other thing you can see, it says dust cloud. So I've created a transform variable. Again, you'll see that in a minute. And then what you do is you just drag and drop your prefab here. And now at that point, the, um, the character that has the script is aware, for want of a better term, is aware of that object. Now, if you notice, it's a prefab. It is not a child. Uh, I thought about going that route, and probably if I worked at it enough, I could come up with a way of doing that. But this one seemed to be the path of least resistance. Might be something that I don't know, and maybe uh, just um, a possibility is that this is always on the screen, so it would be a child, and that you just turn it on and off. Uh, but that in itself poses problems, so we'll get into that. So, uh, so the first thing is making the particle system. The second thing is making the character aware of the particle system by adding that transform variable. And the third thing is where to instantiate. Because what you need to do is your character can keep moving. You don't want the dust cloud to move. So you need to grab um, in real time, okay, where's the character standing now? Instantiate there, but don't move. And that's one of the challenges. If you have a child, as your character jumps, the child is attached, and so the dust cloud is going to go up with you. So that's why I chose not to use a child, why I chose to instantiate. That way I can say, instantiate here, and it stays there. And then your character can keep jumping along. Okay, so let's jump into the script. Now, first of all, this part here in the update section, not going to review it because that's in the other video. This is basically just a couple different ways of checking to see if your character is in mid-jump when you try to jump again. So I'm not going to review that. So starting from the top, uh, again, that's from the last video, so I'm not going to review that. Here's what's new. Public transform dust cloud. As I mentioned, that's what makes the dust cloud uh, variable 
uh, 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 exist and then you just drag and drop the prefab into that. Here's the three locations. What we're going to do, as I said, we're going to grab with each frame the location of your character as they're moving around. Okay, so that's the first thing. We've added these four variables as far as coding. Second thing for coding is this. In the update section, we're going to take these variables and we're going to say what is the current value. So x location is equal to get component transform position x. Now a lot of times when you see get component, you're setting it to a val value. You don't have to. You can actually extract a value. So very often with get component, like down here you can see me actually setting the value. You can actually get a value. You can use get component to extract a value and not necessarily change a value. So you're transferring that value into x, uh, x lock, x location. Same thing for y location. Get component transform position y. And again, z location, z lock equals get component transform position z. Like I said, for 2D, you probably don't need this, but it's good to know that you can do it. So, one last thing. This is what I was talking about. Void on collision enter 2D, collision 2D other. Now, as I mentioned, normally you see on trigger enter 2D, collider 2D. That's just one thing you can actually do. Uh, this would be more of a hard collision, like someone kicking a soccer ball, two cars colliding. You're looking for a true collision. You're not looking for a pass-through or a pass-over. You're looking for an actual collision, a hard stop. So on collision, enter 2D, collider 2D, other. And this is where it all comes together. So we're going to instantiate. So we're going to take that prefab and create it. The first value is going to be the name of the prefab, or actually the variable that you've attached the prefab to. Sorry, so it's the name of the variable that you've that the, that is representing the prefab. So instantiate the dust cloud. This is a very complicated way of putting in three locations. Now, if instead of doing this, you just said uh, transform dot uh, position. See how this says dust cloud dot rotation we could do just transform dot position. That means take the position of the character and use that to instantiate. Problem with that is the hot spot is more than likely the center of the character and that means the dust cloud would instantiate at the center of the character. So what we do, new vector 3, we want the x location but we're gonna shave off just a little bit to center it. We want the y location, this is the important one. We're minusing in this case negative 0.17f if you're using a smaller character, it'd be a much smaller number. So um, on the on the y scale, okay, up and down, up is increase, y is decrease. So let's do this side by side. What we're saying is, since uh, the hot spot is the center, instantiate at 1.7 beneath. No, I did not know this. I had to try try and error, trial and error. Basically, I said, okay, let's try minus one, minus two, minus five. So don't worry, this isn't like something magical I knew. You tr you know, trial and error until you get the right location. So take their so take the character's current x location, adjust it slightly horizontally, adjust it more substantially vertically, and I just put in zero for z. You can do z lock if you want. So. Let's watch it run, and then it'll make a little bit more sense if it's not, because I'm being a little long-winded. So, jump, land, instantiates the dust. Now, if you jump really fast, the cloud does not follow her up. Notice how the cloud stays on the ground? That's why you have to get the location. So when you're hitting the jump button, with every, up with every update, it's grabbing the three positions. So, I uh, shouldn't say when you're hitting the jump button, excuse me, it's when you're colliding, okay? You've grabbed this with each and every frame. Once the collision occurs, you've now just adjusted the X, Y, and Z positions accordingly. So, uh, the, the video I saw, the character is much smaller, so these adjustments will be much smaller. But that's about it. So, uh, the, the main key is that you're using collision instead of trigger collision instead of uh, collider and then you're just adjusting location how do you adjust the location 
you grab the location with each frame. So a little bit messier than what I like, but this one was kind of a quick one though. Uh, any questions, feel free to just put it right in the comments and I can uh, uh, make a follow up.